Hello and welcome to what will be the last episode in our Build Better Rockets tutorial for KSP 1.0 and later. Today we're going to talk about some later game concepts, uh, lifting really big payloads and uh, generally the shenanigans that you read about on Reddit, on Reddit, Reddit, Reddit. Uh, big payload. It's big. With a capital B. So this is a big Kerbidon tank, big NASA tank. It's 81 tons and I wanted to get it to orbit untouched. This is going to be fun. I haven't done this before yet. I haven't uh, worked out what I'm going to do. I need to put a probe core on here though. So otherwise it's going to be not great. Okay. So we've got our, we've got our probe core, we've got some battery. That's our payload that we want to take to um, space. So let's get into designing this rocket. Now, the big thing to remember is that the basics hold true. Where is a large decoupler? That's not it. That's not it either, that must be it. Yeah. So, if the basics hold true, that means that we just need thruster weight between 1.5 and 7 for that first stage, and a total delta V of roughly 4,000, this thing will go to space. But you'll see that that is a bigger challenge than you would first realise. So, let's, let's use all the skills that we've uh, gathered over the last uh, couple of episodes and see if we can build something that's actually going to do it. So what we'll do is we'll angle snap these bad boys. See that's not big enough. I need the bigger nose cone. Okay. When things don't want to radially attach that's fine. Just go grab a cubic octag. Spin it so that it's flat to the side of the thing. Make sure that we're in two times symmetry because then this will now attach to the top of that node. See that? Easy. Engines. We want two skipper engines for this. Ooh. That's hardcore. Now, we have the massive mammoth lifter. We also have the KRL-2 Rhino. I'm thinking that uh, maybe we won't go this way. Maybe we'll go a different way. A little bit of a simpler way. Okay, we can actually add more weight there. One point three four. We could actually up that to a big NASA tank. Okay, so the way the sizes work, right, is you have small, medium, and then large, okay? So two of these equals one of them, two of these equals one of them, that's how it works. So if you find you can add two on top of this, of that, you end up with an acid tank. And that holds true for all of the sizes, they all work in that way. Okay, that's a big ass rocket, that's excellent, that's what we're after. fuel tank. Let's grab the big Kerbidon tank and then grab a mammoth lifter. Ah, so now you see, right, we've got the we've got the thrust to weight currently but we have nowhere near the Delta V. We are nowhere near it. So we need to get a little bit fancy and I'm thinking that what we'll do is we will get a little bit uh, creative with our staging and also our fuel. So let's grab structural, get some Kerbal attachment. Actually what I'll do quickly, so I'm just going to give the ma mammoth stage a little bit of extra kick. Oh I can't, bugger they've changed the, oh was it always like that, I think it was always like that. But that's okay, we'll give it some kick anyway, we'll just do it a different way.
<laughs> yo yo. Grab a nose cone so we can make it look pretty. Okay, and what you can do is you can duck inside of the parts to see what you're looking at. So if I grab the cubic octag now and zoom back out, turn off angle snap and remove these in. Get them lined up. Happy days. Just like that. Yep, okay, so that's all fine, all okay, all dandy. I need to add a little bit more fuel to this stage. Because right now our thruster weight is really high. Actually, I could add a big NASA tank there, I'm thinking. Oh, we're so close. So close. I can actually add more fuel to this because it can take it. It has got the thrust out the proverbial. Oh my lord, I could add another NASA tank here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Well, without, it goes without saying, that is a big ass rocket. Like that's 50 meters tall and uh, weighs the better part of a half ton, um, better part of 500 ton. So what I'll actually do, right, is I'll change this because there are other ways of tackling this problem. Okay, so we've got tons right now. Okay, what we'll do, okay, is we'll do some drop tanks because you know why not. And they're going to flow into the main tank. Oh, what's happened there? My symmetry's gone all crazy. Ta-da! Now, with this in mind though, we need to actually change that to something a little bit different. We'll go to one of these, right? down again in symmetry. Whoops. There we go. We'll get some fuel ducts. Attach them to the main. Oh, there we go. So there is a rocket that will actually go to space. And that was probably easier than I anticipated. But you can see that the, the basics hold true. You can... Whoops, I pressed the wrong button there. You can play around with it as much as you want, but at the end of the day, that's what's going to work for you. The reason this works is because after this fuel has been used, we're actually getting rid of this, all this weight. Because remember, these tanks do weigh something after they're, uh, they're empty. So we get rid of them, that's all good, and then we continue on to space. So that's one way of doing it. The other way would be actually to put engines under these. Ditch these mainsails from the main stage and put them under the, the liquid boosters. But you can see that this, this is starting to become really unmanageable. Okay? If I took this to the pad, this thing would be a bear to fly. It would not be cool. And there's just no way around it. As you get bigger and bigger and bigger and more powerful, they become harder to drive. So, there are realistic limits to what you need to do. So, to overcome those realistic limits, right, if I was to add another NASA tank up here, okay, oh, that's the root part, that's why. And say, so, hey, I want to get this one up there too. Oh my lord, you see the problem starts all over again. Okay, Our best effort last time has got nothing on this now. So, there are realistic limits. So where do you go after that? Well, you go to smaller rockets. Stick, try and decrease your payload size if you can. That means, sure, if you want to get a NASA tank into orbit, do it, just do it empty. Holy moly, all of a sudden, this thing would go halfway to the sun. Okay tanks empty. Try and break up your payloads. If you're trying to lift a station, don't lift it all in one piece. 
constructed on orbit. That's what NASA did. That's what all the space agencies did. That's what Russia did when they wanted to build Mir and the other um, there are the space stations. Um, oh, what was the other one? I forget. Anyway, that's that's what you need to do. So good luck with it. I hopefully I've uh, I've taught you a thing or two. Drop tanks, yeah, they, they are what they are. I, I prefer to go the um, conventional route, but hopefully you've picked up a thing or two. Uh, what I'll be doing is I'll be starting a KSP walkthrough of the career. Uh, I'll be covering the um, early to mid game and trying to teach uh, a th how to get through that that early stage of the game and get the concepts down. Make sure you leave a comment if you have a question uh, be sure to ask I'm, I'd love to help you out I'd love to uh, give you as much guidance as I can but until next time thank you for joining me.